Here's everything you need to know about extracting text from a PDF when using Bubble.io. If you're new to this channel, I'm Matt. I've been building apps with Bubble since 2017, and each week I record new videos. I meet one-to-one -one and I help out our members uh, to accelerate through uh, their roadblocks uh, when building no-code apps with Bubble. And if you want to become a member, you can click a link down in the description below to join our community. But let's dive into uh, this challenge in front of us, which is PDF extraction. And this is, um, or oh, passing a PDF. This is uh, something that came up in the bubble coaching call that I was on only a few days ago. Uh, and I'm going to teach you everything that uh, I went through with uh, our customer, our client, um, and uh, share it with you. So first of all, if you are using small PDFs, then you can probably get away with a plugin. Uh, and there are a number of PDF plugins available, uh, which will uh, extract data from a PDF. Let me just see if I can find, uh, so it's PDF generation ones, uh, if I search for pass, uh, no, oh, what is it, PDF, PDF text. Uh, okay, yep, here's one here. Um, so there are some free plugins, there are some paid plugins. Uh, the mileage that you'll get with them, you'll simply just have to test one out. So what you would do is go to a page uh, like this. Uh, you'd add in a file uploader. You'd add in a button. Uh, so we'll say uh, extract text. Let's make the file uploader a bit bigger. And then you'd add in some text as a somewhere to print the result. And um, we're not going to save anything to the database. So for this example, I'll just use a custom state. Custom states are like a temporary variable that you can store on any element on the page. I like to create them on the page itself. Otherwise, I forget where I've put them. So we'll say this is extracted text. And it's a type text. Great. And then in here, we'll just print the, any data, any text that's put into our pages, custom state. Is going to print there but here's the issue we had uh when i was working with this coaching client is that it worked fine for a small pdf and uh in this case i'm not talking about i uh, like file size like is it um you know loads of images uh, i'm talking about uh, file length in terms of pages how much text there was and it worked well for this client with small uh, pdfs but uh we found that uh like my, my assumption here is that I think Bubble has put a timeout, I think it was 30 seconds, on a um, workflow action. So if I was to install one of these PDF plugins, uh, if I go PDF text, uh, the way that it works is it adds an action into your Bubble app. So uh, if we go here and add in a workflow, we'll say uh, PDF, uh, pass PDF. And then it's asking for the URL of the PDF, and we would probably just supply that from the file uploader. It's found you. Now, the one thing to be wary here is uh, does it want the value or does it you want the values URL? You'd have to check that. And also, when you print a URL uh, in Bubble uh, based on something that's stored on Bubble, uh, you might find that you have to add in HTTP colon because bubble will start the url with slash slash so it misses that off the http um colon uh, and then of course you would do something like set state and it's the output okay uh so yeah that's going to work for smaller pdfs but um what we found was uh it looks like bubble has has got a restriction in place uh, because we tried this and found this across a number of pdf uh, passing plugins. We even tried it in the in a back-end workflow thinking that might function slightly differently, but it worked the same. It had the same limitation, which is I think that Bubble plugin actions have a timeout limit of 30 seconds. So if you put a huge PDF in there and it takes more than 30 seconds for it to extract all the, the text from it, and of course that's going to vary depending on the approach that the plugin takes, like what sort of library is it using to extract text from a PDF, but yeah, like I say, we tried a few of them and they all had the same issue when dealing with really large files in terms of number of pages, which is that they timed out. And this was offering, yeah, this is a, you yeah, know, that's a terrible user experience and this bubble coaching client needed to get it sorted. So uh, when you meet a uh, limitation in bubble, uh, first thing you can do is try and look for an affordable and reliable third party API. And uh, the one that we ended up using was called pdf.co. You can get started for free in order to test it. And I'm going to show you how we can set up pdf.co uh, in the Bubble API connector. So I'm going to go into plugins, go to APIs, 
add in a new API. This is just a test app that I've done AI stuff. I've done uh, web scraping, uh, vector databases, weather search results, you name it, it's in here. Um, so we'll add in a new API called pdf.co. And then I'm guessing it's private key and header. If I go into the documentation, uh, we'll find the API docs. And I want to do PDF to text. And they offer two. They offer one which uses OCR and AI, and they offer a cheaper one, which is simple. And so I want to do it with simple. Uh, and then um, they've got some uh, example down here. And so I can see that they want the authentication to be X API key and then the API key. So we'll go back into my bubble app. Usually it is authorization, but some apps it varies. And then I'll paste my API key into here. And now I'll set up my first call. So I'll say PDF to text. And it's an action because it's going to be a workflow action. Uh, and then I believe that it's a post request. I'm guessing based on the structure as documentation. Uh, yeah, so we go, it's a post request. Here's the endpoint that we want to use. Copy that. Paste it into here. And then what data are we sending across? Well, we say uh, we need to supply the URL. Uh, I'm not quite sure what inline refers to here. Let's have a look. Uh, return results inside the response. Yes, yes. So we want to inline. Uh, so here we go. And paste it in. Um, and then we need to make this dynamic and we also need to initialize it in the API connector so that we teach Bubble the structure of how things, uh, of, of the response that we're going to get from the API. So first of all, I'm going to make it dynamic. So we'll say URL. Notice that I take out the speech marks because I'll add the speech marks back in because I'm going to make it JSON safe when I send it just in case. Uh, and then I basically need a PDF that I can test this on. So I'm just going to go into this file manager of this app that I've used a lot. Uh, I've obviously done, so I'm just going to get this one. Uh, copy link address. Paste it in. And I'm going to initialize my call. And the fact that I've not got an error back immediately tells me that it's worked. And actually we found this to be quicker than the PDF uh, plugins. Um, so uh, here we go. Basically, I can see that we get the text back. Now, it is a mess because it is kind of extracted back. Uh, you know, it's just ripping the text out of the PDF. So what you could do here is run it through an AI in order to say clean it up or turn it into a particular format. Uh, you might get better results if you use the uh, PDF to text, which isn't the simple option. Um, but this has worked. And the bit that I want back is in, uh, where's the, oh, it's body. They've called it body. Cool. Right. So I'll click save. Uh, and now let's go into back onto design and we'll add it into our workflow. So we're not using the plugin but we are using the pdf.co pdf to text. And the reason it's written like that is because that's exactly what I uh, called it in the API connector. Uh, and then we add in the URL. So this is going to be a file uploader's value. Actually, I'm going to do this in arbitrary text because I think I need to add in the HTTP at the start. So it's going to be HTTP colon file uploader's value URL and then I JSON save it at the end. And then I'm setting the result with step one. And remember, I get all of that metadata back and it's the body. Um, okay, so let's run it and test it. So I've just dragged a file in to the uploader uh, to upload. And while it's uploading, I'll just explain some key principles with the file uploader. First of all, the default bubble file uploader, when a user drops a file in, this is the same with the picture uploader, it is immediately saved to your bubble's app storage. So if you want them to be able to preview the file or, or kind of make changes to it, you need to be using a different file uploader. And we've done a video on that uh, using a file uploader called Better File Uploader. The other thing uh, to be wary of, and this is a kind of annoying limitation that uh, you, you just have to be aware of, is that by uploading a file to Bubble, just as I showed you with the one in my file um, 
file manager is unless it's uploaded and marked as private it means that anyone can access that file if they know the location of a file if they know it's unique url uh, then they can access that file if you mark it as private then that means that if someone were to try and access that file and they didn't have the right session cookie like they were logged in user with the right privacy rules to access the file then they're going to get a um, an error message from the server the implication of this is that if you are using a third party service like we're using pdf.co to uh, fetch the file, that file needs to be public. Now, there is a workaround here, which I've not tested, but I was exploring with my bubble coaching client, which is that you can upload files to pdf.co. Uh, where is it? File upload. Uh, you can upload them as base64. So here's something that I've yet to test, but is is um, theoretically possible, which is that you can uh, use better file uploader to get a PDF, a version of your PDF as base64, send it along to pdf.co, knowing now that the file is is protected, at least according to pdf.co's temporary file storage, and then you can use pdf.co's host's version of the file to pass it in as uh, into the endpoint here that we're currently working with. The other experimental thing that I, I was talking with the client is what about if, if my user or their user uploads a like a docx file? Well, it looked like uh, you could uh, create a uh, PDF from the docx file and then you could pass it through here. So it's multiple steps. It is slightly disappointing that pdf.co uh, can't take kind of any standard document file and convert it to text. But those are the things that we kind of, we're nearing the end of our call and we've, we thought these were worth testing out. Um, let's go back to our, our demo and we can see that the file has now been added. I'm gonna go step by step just so we can see what's happening. So I'm gonna go extract and we can see here that yes, HTTP, oh, I probably need to add an S there. We might get an error um uh get back yeah we got but okay possibly that's because uh i didn't add so i think it failed to access the file https okay take two i've re-uploaded the file i'm still on step by step let's go extract text i'm getting back empty Okay, I wonder why that is. I am I am uploading a different PDF. Um, let me try um, try something else. Right, take two. I think this is because I simply searched for uh, example PDFs uh, because I wanted something that had text, and maybe the one that I picked needed some OCR. Um, you know, the, the text wasn't actually text on the page, but it was part of an image. So here's another PDF, a uh, different one. Uh, let's go step by step and let's test it here. There we go, and we get back the value. So I think what was going on there is that really I needed to be using the uh, PDF to text, which uh, uses, uh, here we go, uses uh, OCR, um, and also looks like it does something to do with layout. Um, but yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I do like to keep in the bits where it kind of goes wrong because I want to show my process of debugging and also kind of explain yeah, just explain what's going on. Um, so there are other services out there to extract text from PDFs. Uh, PDF.co is just one of the top ones that comes up in search results. Uh, as always, I would test and I would compare with pricing based on the usage you expect from your users using this particular API. Um, but uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can use uh, PDF.co. And yeah, just to say this worked on, on a 300 page document uh, when I was working with the coaching client earlier on in the week. So hopefully that's helpful for you. And if you found this video good, please like subscribe.